All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Now let me pass on one great rule to you which has been discovered in interviewing self-made millionaires. Self-made millionaires look into every failure for something good. They say there's got to be something good in this that I can benefit from and surprise, surprise, they always find it. Second is self-made millionaires always seek the valuable lesson in every setback or obstacle or temporary failure and they always find the lesson. Now, what do failures do? Failures whine and cry and think about what they've lost and blame their problems on someone else. Successful people say, what can I learn from this that will make me smarter next time? And my promise to you, those who seek find, is that if you go looking for a valuable lesson in the biggest problem that you're facing today, you'll always find the lesson. Here's another possibility. Your biggest problem today could be the biggest gift that you have ever received because it may contain within it the lesson that will make you successful. If you stop thinking about what happened and who's to blame and you start looking for the gift within your problem, sometimes it can transform your life. The next key is to dedicate yourself to lifelong learning. Now, what takes you from rags to riches is personal development, personal professional development. In the 21st century, as Peter Drucker says, knowledge and skill are the keys to the 21st century. And the only thing that will be relevant, the only skill that will be relevant in the 21st century is the ability to learn new skills. Because virtually everything you know is becoming obsolete at a rapid rate. Stephen Covey says that your current knowledge base has a half-life of two years. Which means that half of everything you know will be irrelevant within two years. And two years from now, half more. So if you're not continually learning and upgrading your knowledge and skills, you're not staying in the same place. As Pat Riley says, the basketball coach says, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. If you're not constantly learning, you're actually falling behind. So here are the three keys to continuous learning. Number one is read in your field 30 to 60 minutes each day. In other words, turn off the television, turn off the radio, put aside the newspaper, and just read in your field. The very best places to read, by the way, are books. Read books, the best-selling books written by the most successful people in your field, because books contain a wealth of riches that can enable you to function at a far higher level, to get much better results than you, than, than you could before. So read 30 to 60 minutes a day. I've had people tell me, countless people over the years, that reading an hour a day has doubled and tripled their income within a year. The second thing you do is take every course that you possibly can. The courses and seminars that are available to you in your field, that are given by professionals, that are courses that have been developed over years and years and years. They have been tested and tested and tested. The person who is talking to you for several hours has spent thousands of hours learning their subject. They have dry tested this or, or done test runs with thousands of other people. When you take a course, you can learn enough information in one or two days, more than you could learn in two or three years or maybe even a lifetime all distilled and put together people say I can't afford a course you cannot afford not to buy books you can't afford not afford not to go to courses some years ago I had a dentist and he was a very successful dentist I was recommended to me by a friend and this dentist retired at the age of 53 and just before he retired he sold his practice for about two million dollars just before he retired he told me why he said about eight years before he had attended a dental con congress in Hong Kong his front, this is from California. He'd flown all the way to Hong Kong to attend this International Dental Congress because there were specialists giving private lectures, sort of plenary sessions on the side. And he attended this session, and it was on a particular technique of cosmetic surgery that this dentist had developed that no one else knew, where you could basically straighten out a person's entire front jaw so they looked beautiful at a very low cost, at a very high level of effectiveness. He came back and he began implementing this in his practice. People began flying from 500 to 1,000 miles away. Every dentist sent their, their families, members and themselves to this dentist. He was able to charge whatever he wanted to charge. He said eight years later he retired as a self-made millionaire at the age of 53 to enjoy his money for the rest of his life from what he learned from one session at one convention at one course. Now that's, that is a true story and maybe it's an exception, but you can never tell where the information is going to come from. The third uh, way that you can upgrade your skills is listen to audio programs in your car. The average driver drives sorry, 500 to 1,000 hours a year, 25 to 50,000 miles. If you listen to audio programs in your car, according to the University of Southern California, you will get the equivalent of almost full-time university attendance just listening to learning material as you drive around. It can totally and profoundly change your life. Very, very important.
Here's an interesting point. The more you commit yourself to becoming the best person you can be, the more you like yourself and respect yourself, the more energy you have, the bigger goals you set for yourself, the more you persist. When you invest in yourself and you read and learn and upgrade your skills, you're telling yourself, wow, I am a person with a great future and it's up to me to maximize my potential. And your self-esteem goes up, your self-respect goes up, your sense of personal pride goes up and you started to get promoted more and paid more in, in every part of your life. Get around the right people. This is a key for becoming a self-made millionaire. Dr. David McClellan at Harvard did studies for 25 years looking into why it is that some people succeeded greatly in life. What he found was that as much as 99% of your success in life is going to be determined by what he called your reference group. Your reference group are the people with whom you habitually associate. They're the people that you associate with at work, the people you associate with home, your church, your political party, your social circle. What he found in working with people is that changing a person's reference group totally transformed the way they think. Why? It's because we are like chameleons and we absorb through the skin the attitudes, the opinions, the behaviors, the style of dress, the style of speech of the people with whom we associate most of the time. If you start to associate with winners most of the time, you find that they have a totally different worldview. They're positive, they're upbeat, they're focused, they're learning, they're growing, they're positive of what they're doing, and you start to become like that. Next is be prepared to climb from peak to peak. One of the keys to becoming a self-made millionaire is to realize that life is never one continuous train. It's always up and down. So it goes up. Like if you climb a mountain peak, you have to go down into the valley before you climb the next peak. So all of life is cycles and trends. All of life is cycles and trends. And there's up cycles and there's down cycles and there's up trends and there's down trends. The question is, what is the general direction of your trends? We say this is that life is two steps forward and one step back. Successful people focus on the two steps forward and then they protect themselves on the downside so that each time there's a step back, they're still further ahead than they were before. The next one, which is to develop resilience and bounce back. Developing resilience and bouncing back is one of the key qualities of self-made millionaires because as I said right at the beginning, most things won't work. <laughs> this is a very interesting point is that you're going to be knocked down over and over again. And what we know is my friend Charlie Jones says is you have to bounce, don't break. And when things go wrong, bounce. And so what I learned many years ago was this interesting technique of what is called mental rehearsal. And mental rehearsal says that you mentally prepare for the inevitable downturns before they occur. So you say, all right, in the course of life, things are going to go wrong. But when they do, I'm not going to become upset. I'm not going to get mad or angry or anything else. I'm just going to take it and learn from it and pick myself up and keep going. Sometimes I ask this question, does anybody here have any problems? And everybody says, yes, everybody's got problems. Well, here's the rule is all of life is a continuous series of problems. They never end. The problems just keep on coming like the waves of the ocean. The only break in this unbroken series of problems will be the occasional crisis. So life will be problem, 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 crisis. It's like the waves of the ocean, six problems and a crisis, six problems and a crisis. Which means that everybody here is either in a crisis right now, has just gotten out of a crisis, or is just about to have a crisis. So what we have found is this, the hallmark of superior people, 30 years of research, is how you respond to a crisis. How you deal with problems and how you respond to a crisis. And what we have found is this, is superior people look for the solution to every problem. They don't allow themselves to become upset and angry when something goes wrong. They say, okay, what's the solution? And they become intensely solution oriented. When you have a very intense problem, that stimulates creativity to solve the problem. So what you do is you write and define the problem clearly. If you have a problem, you say, wait a minute, what is my problem? What is it that I'm worried about? And write it down. And the very act of defining a problem clearly often triggers the solution to the problem. One last technique that I want to give you with regard to your major definite purpose. And if you only do these two things as a result of our time together, they will transform your life. You've already identified the one goal that can have the greatest positive impact on your life. Now what you do is you take that goal and you write it at the top of a page in the form of a question. And you say, let us say you, your goal is to double your income. That could have a major impact on your life. You say, 
what are all the things that I could do to double my income in the next 12 months? Write it as a clear question. Even better, if you're earning $50,000 a year today, right? what could I do to earn $100,000 over the next 12 months? The more specific the question, the better. Then you devote yourself to writing 20 answers to this question. You must write a minimum of 20 answers. Work harder, work smarter, start earlier, stay later, change occupations, upgrade my skills, whatever it is, keep forcing yourself to write till you've written 20 answers. We call this mind storming. The first three to five answers will be easy. The next three to five answers will be difficult. The last 10 answers will be incredibly difficult. But I have given this exercise to people who've gone on to become millionaires so many times I've lost track because they often find that the 20th answer changes their whole life. And if you've ever done this once, it's absolutely staggering. More people have become millionaires with this simple idea of mindstorming, what I call the 20 idea method, than any other single method of creative thinking ever discovered. Once you've got your 20 answers, pick one answer and take action on it immediately. Once you've got, it doesn't matter what it is, just take one answer and take action on it and that will keep you thinking and acting creatively all day long. And the next key to becoming a self-made millionaire is to become an unshakable optimist. Unshakable optimist means that you think and talk about what you want most of the time. Optimists think and talk about what they want. They look for the good in every situation. They seek the valuable lesson. They're constantly feeding their mind with great ideas, which opens up new perspectives. What I have found is that optimists have three wonderful qualities. Number one is they learn more things. As a result, they dramatically increase the likelihood that they will learn the right thing at the right time. Number two is they try more things, which dramatically increases the likelihood that they'll try the right thing at the right time. And number three is they persist. They never give up. Optimists make a decision that once they've decided they're going to become wealthy, they just never stop until they achieve that goal. Now, will they have many setbacks and obstacles and difficulties? Do you know that almost everybody succeeds in a different direction from what they originally intended? or from what they originally thought, but they just keep going. Almost like a football player running down the field, running, blocking, changing, moving back, forward, continually, but never loses sight of the goal. So optimists learn more things, try more things, and persist longer. I want to leave you with the last two qualities of self-made millionaires. Second to the last quality is that they develop the qualities of courage and persistence. I said before the biggest single obstacle to success is the fear of failure. The antidote to the fear of failure is the habit of courage. And what we know is that you need two types of courage to succeed. The first type of courage is the courage to begin. It's the courage to launch with no guarantees of success. Someone once said that if all obstacles must first be removed, nothing will ever get done. So successful people are willing to think, plan, make decisions, and then take action with no guarantees. We say leap and the net will appear. Take action with no guarantees and then learn. The second part of courage is the courage to endure. It's the courage to persist. It's the courage to keep on keeping on. It's to make the decision in advance that you will never give up. No matter what happens, you will never give up. You will get knocked down over and over again, but you'll never give up. And the interesting thing is if you make that decision in advance, you'll find yourself continually bouncing back. So courage means, it means the courage to begin and the courage to endure. And the final quality of self-made millionaires, and Napoleon Hill called this the master key to riches. After studying 500 of the richest people in American history, he said it's the quality of self-discipline. It's the ability to make yourself do what you should do, when you should do it, whether you feel like it or not. The quality of self-discipline is the quality that will make you a big success. It's the ability to force yourself to do what you know you should do. And here is the wonderful discovery. This persistence is self-discipline in action. Every time you persist, you build your self-discipline. Every time you practice self-discipline, you build your ability to persist. And the two of them are tied into your self-esteem. So the more you persist, the more you like yourself. And the more you like yourself, the more dis discipline you have. And the more discipline you have in practice, the more you like yourself. As a result, the more you persist. And eventually you get onto an upward spiral where you become absolutely unstoppable. You reach the point where you know you can achieve the goal and nothing in the world can stop you. And every step that you take forward makes you stronger and stronger and stronger until finally people say, I know one thing about him, I know one thing about her. You cannot stop him or her. Once they decided they want something, they will not stop until they get it. And when you develop that quality, there will be nothing that is impossible to you. So let me just leave you with these last points. We're living at the very best time in all of human history. 
More people are going to make more money in the next few years than have ever been made in all of human history. More people are going to become millionaires and are becoming millionaires today at a faster rate than we've ever thought possible. And no one is better than you and no one is smarter than you. And if you do what other self-made millionaires do, then nothing in the world can stop you from eventually getting the same results as other self-made millionaires. And I hope you do. A beautiful line I read not long ago said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. Which means to have a vision, and even though the vision is in the air or the sky, then build a foundation under your dreams. And when you see men and women who rise from poverty and obscurity to fame and renown, you invariably see someone who had a vision of what they could be and have and do that was far beyond what they were. Every one of us has had an experience. At one time, when we were small, we had a vision of being grown up and having our own cars. And as we grew older, we had a vision of having our own homes and our own families. And as we grew older, we had a vision of traveling and going to Europe. We fulfill all our visions. The wonderful thing is this, is that we always tend to achieve our goals. The problem is that our goals are set so low that even when we do achieve them, they don't turn us on. They don't fill us with enthusiasm. So dream big dreams, if you like, and focus on results not activities. This is the key. Be clear about the results that you're trying to accomplish. This is one of the keys of peak performance, by the way. All peak performers are result-oriented. All losers or underachievers tend to be activity-oriented. And in activity orientation, what they do is they work very, very hard. Sometimes they work frantically. Sometimes they work longer hours than you do, but they lose sight of the results. Ben Trigo, the strategic thinker, said, the very worst thing in the world is to do very efficiently what need not be done at all. And many of us work very, very hard to do very efficiently what need not be done at all. And anybody who's ever had employees will tell you that you, every single day you come across your employees doing something very diligently, but it's completely irrelevant to the success of the business. So focus on results. Here's a key question to ask yourself in your working life. I think it's one of the most important key questions. I'll give you two. Number one is, what results are expected of me? What results are expected of me? Not what activities, but what results or what outputs, what am I supposed to produce in my job? A second question you can ask yourself is, why am I on the payroll? Why am I on the payroll? What results are expected? The results that are expected of us in selling are sales. And the only time that we are working is when we are doing something that contributes directly to that result. Isn't that true? <laughs> but of course, why do we do the other things? I've come to the conviction that the reason why we do the other things is because they are fun and easy rather than hard and necessary. I think the major reason why people fail in life, if I can pass this on, which wasn't part of this, but major reason why people fail in life is because of the expediency factor that we always do and we always take the fastest and easiest route to get the things that we want. But the fastest and easiest route in life is almost always the route to failure. It's short-term gain for long-term pain. We do what is fun and easy today instead of what is hard and necessary, and then we have to do what is hard and necessary at the end of our life when it's too late. And you'll find that the willingness and the ability to discipline yourself, to be clear about what it is you want, to be clear where you're going, to be clear about the results that you're expected to accomplish, and then to only work on those results. The ability to discipline yourself to do that is absolutely critical for success. It is not possible to conceive of a person being successful who is not capable of disciplining themselves to do what is hard and what is necessary rather than what is fun and easy. And when, especially when it comes to managing your time, when it comes to looking at what you should do on a day-to-day -day basis, focus on results, not activities. Now let me give you a method which has helped me write out your goals. All goals have to be in writing, by the way. If you don't have your goals in writing, uh, then they're not really goals at all. They're merely wishes. And as they say, a wish is merely a goal without any energy behind it. Have your goals in writing. Write them out very specifically and clearly, and then do this. Every single morning, rewrite your major goals in the first person singular as though they already existed. Rewrite your major goals every single morning. Now, this should take you about two to four minutes, maybe five. You can do it all in a paragraph. If, for instance, if your goal is to earn $50,000 a year, every single morning, write, I earn $50,000 a year. If your goal is to be excellent in real estate, say, I am an excellent salesperson in my field. If your goal is to weigh a certain number of pounds, if your goal is to enjoy a certain kind of life, write down your major goals in the first person singular as though they already existed today every single morning. And then every single evening, Take about five, 10 minutes instead of watching television. Just before you turn on the television, say, wait a second, I've got to review my progress. And sit down and review what you've done in the course of the day and say, what have I done right today? What have I done right that's moved me toward my goals? And second question is, what would I do differently if I had today to do over again? Those, those four steps, by the way, writing and rewriting your goal each morning, reviewing them in the evening, and asking yourself those two questions. What did I do right? What did I do that moved me toward my goals today? 
And what would I do differently if I had the day to live over? If you'll ask yourself those two questions, in the next 30 days, you'll accomplish more than you accomplished in the last six months. This is the most incredible method I've ever seen. I learned it some years ago. Just rewrite your goals every morning. The only problem with goals is that we don't set enough of them and we don't set them highly enough. You can have anything you want. Imagine you could have anything that you want, anything that you can hold in your mind on a continuing basis you can have. Anything that you are crystal clear about wanting and are willing to pay the price to get, you can have. So clarity is the key. Be clear about what you want. Be clear about what you have to do to get it. Be clear about your vision. Be clear. Speak, walk, talk, and act with clarity. And that's the final point with regard to clarity. I have seen many men and women who have tripped themselves up by being beaters around the bushers, if you like. They are very careful about whatever they say, and by the time they say it, people have gone home for lunch. And one of the keys to success is to be very straight and to be very clear, be very precise. Interesting, one of the reasons why people do not speak to the point is for fear of offending others. Isn't that true? For fear of offending others. Interesting study they did last year. They asked a great number of executives, male and female. They said, if you had to tell a person something unfortunate with regard to their career that was going to affect their lives, and this is something that you've known for a long time, how would you go about breaking the news to them? And each of the person described the strategy they would take, they would set up the timing right, they would start off with a talk about, uh, talking about subjects that they had in common, they would close the door and keep out the noise. Anyways, they went around and around, and they're all circuitous routes of how they would get to the point. And then they reversed the question, they said, how would you like to be informed of this same subject? And every single one of them said, I'd like to be informed in a straightforward way. I'd like somebody to tell me straight the news. You see, all of us want to be dealt with in a straightforward way because we know we can take whatever it is. But we think that everybody else is too fragile. So what we do is we pussyfoot and tippy-toe around and, and avoid giving them the news and we finally do get the news to them sometimes causes more problems than is necessary. So be straightforward, be clear in your language, be clear in your actions. Let people know exactly where you stand and let people know exactly what you've said and what you mean. Very, very important. And it takes practice, by the way. Uh, every single one of these habit patterns, every single one of these qualities has to be learned by practice. And I sat down and looked at this whole concept of excellence and I saw something that I hadn't noticed. It's almost like something brought to the surface of your mind. I noticed that every single man or woman that I had studied who had achieved any kind of success in any field whatsoever had done it after they had made a commitment to becoming excellent in that field. And I began to look and I began to compare and I began to talk to people and I speak to thousands of people virtually every month. I found that I never found a single person who was successful who was not excellent at what they did. That competence, the commitment to becoming excellent in your chosen field is an indispensable prerequisite for success. That if you are not good at what you do, you haven't got a chance in our competitive society unless you win the lottery. That success is predictable if you commit yourself to becoming excellent. It does a whole lot of other things within your mind, but if you commit yourself to becoming excellent, it changes everything about you. And only the top 5 or 10% are excellent. You've heard the rule, the 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle, that the top 20% of salespeople make 80% of the sales, that the bottom 80% of salespeople make 20% of the sales. Do you, know, do you know what the difference, the ratio is there? The ratio is the difference between 16 to 1. That the average income of people in the top 20% is 16 times the average income of the people in the bottom 80%. Now, let me ask you a question. Does it mean the people in the top 20% are 16 times better than the people in the bottom 80%? 16 times more experience? Do they work 16 times the number of hours? Do they have 16 times the number of years of education? Are they 16 times more handsome? Are they 16 times anything? But 20% of these people are making 16 times the average of the rest. Prudential Insurance Company did a study some years ago, and they put the thousands of agents that they have throughout the United States into their computers and compared their income, and it came out the 80-20 rule worked. 20% of the salespeople were doing 80% of the business. Well, they had all the data on the computer, so they ran it through one more time. They said, what's the average income of the top 20% of the top 20% compared to the bottom 80%? Now, for those mathematicians among you, that works out to the top 4%. What was the average income? They found the top 4% were earning, on average, 32 times the average of the people in the bottom 80%. So they said, this is interesting, and they ran it through one more time. They found that the top 20% of the top 20% of the top 20%, which is the top 0.8%, that's good, top 0.8% were earning, on average, 54 times the average of the people in the bottom 80%. What they found is that in every state and in every major city where they had an office with a large number of agents working out of it, there was one agent who was selling the same product at the same price to the same people with the same competition under the same circumstances under the same set of difficulties in the economy who was earning 50 times the amount of the average adult. That there were 50 agents in the office and one person was earning more than all of them put together.
Isn't that amazing? And one of the things they found is that the key to this was that each one of these agents had made the commitment to become excellent early in their career. They didn't say, I'm going to go into this and I'm going to earn a living. They said, I'm going to go into this and I'm going to be the best. You must commit yourself to excellence. You must commit yourself to becoming the best. And the wonderful thing is that excellence is a journey. It's not a destination. You never get there. Complacency and satisfaction are the key enemies of excellence. But once you commit yourself to becoming excellent, the whole world opens up for you. A very important point of excellence is this means simply this. Do your best every time out and always strive to do it better. Do your best every time out and always strive to do it better. Remember, it's usually the last 5 or 10% of any job or project that makes all the difference. And what we do is we get to 90% done and then we start to drag our heels. We start to put the paperwork aside. We start to think of excuses. We start to do what is fun and easy rather than what is hard and necessary. And if you're going to do anything at all, the only time you're going to get any joy out of it is if you do it well. You see, when we do something well, it gives us a feeling of self-esteem and pride. We feel like a winner. But if we do things in an average way, it doesn't give us anything. You notice that? It doesn't give us anything. We do it in an average way, it doesn't give us anything. But if we do it in a really exceptional way, it makes us feel wonderful about ourselves. You see, you don't have to be a quantum leap different from somebody else. You just have to be a little tiny bit different in the critical areas that make a difference. And you, get, you can achieve that simply by making it a goal, setting it as a goal, and working on it. You can become anything that you want to become. The harder you work, the better you get. The harder you work, the better you get. You know, in our society today, there's a lot of controversy over why should I work so hard for my job? The fact of the matter is that less than 5% really succeed. That's less than 5% of the population really succeed at life. Of 100 people working today, only one will be wealthy when they retire. Four will be financially independent, 15 will have some savings, 80% will be broke and dependent upon charities and pensions. Only one or two percent of people in each generation really makes it in life. And in every single study, those people who make it are those who work hard, hard, hard. And if you think that it's hard to be successful, try being a failure. Try coming to the end of the trail with no money, dependent upon pensions, and you don't know what hard is until you try living like that. But if you work hard, the average self-made millionaire in America works 12 to 13 hours a day. Works about 60 to 65 hours a week. I'll tell you this with regard to hard work, that you, in our society you only work eight hours a day for survival. Everything over eight hours is for success. If you're only working eight hours a day, you better have a rich uncle or you better have somebody else who's going to take care of you because eight hours a day only gets you survival in our society. Because it's so competitive that somebody else is working nine, they've got an edge on you. Somebody else is working 10, they've got a bigger edge on you. Every hour over eight that you invest is an investment in your future, is an investment in your success. And if you put in the hours over eight, whether it's studying or reading or working, if you put in the hours, it will pay off and it will pay off in spades. It's like throwing seed in the ground. When you throw a seed in the ground, the plant that comes up is not just one seed, it's hundreds of seeds. There's a crop that you put in, but you must put the seed in the ground first. The market only pays excellent rewards for excellent performance. It pays average rewards for average performance. It pays below average rewards for below average performance. And I talk to men and women all over America who are unhappy and they're sad and they don't like their work. And you know why? It's because they're not good at what they're doing. Well, let me give you a couple of key points. Is first of all, you'll never have a feeling of self-esteem and self-worth. You'll never feel wonderful about yourself until you know that you are good at what you're doing. Number two is if you do not love your work enough to want to be the best at it, get out of it the way you would get out of a burning house. Do not stay at a job that you do not love because it is the high road to failure, dissatisfaction, frustration, and unhappiness in life. Develop a sense of urgency. A sense of urgency is a quality that is possessed by only 2% of the population. 2% of the population do things fast. 2% of the population have a bias for action. Imagine if you own a company and you had two people in the company. And both of them were reasonably well talented, both of them were doing reasonably well, except one person had a sense of urgency and did things fast. And every time you give them something to do, they took it and they ran with it like a ball player catching a fumble and running for the goal line. The other person got to it after lunch or maybe next Monday or no rush, week's almost over, Thursday afternoon, and so on. Which one would you give additional responsibility to? Which one would you promote? Which one would you spend money training? Which one would you send to places where you needed help? It's always the person with a sense of urgency. Uh, the Gallup organization that just did a wonderful book called The Great American Success Story, they surveyed 1,500 people in Marquis Who's Who in America, 1,500 of the most respected men and women in America, and they asked them, what do you consider to be the most important single quality of success? And they agreed almost unanimously on common sense. Just common sense. 
good common sense. As my friend Charlie Jarvis says, the average person has an enormous amount of common sense because they haven't used any of it yet. You can train your mind to have common sense. You can train your mind to think things through before acting. In my experience, action without thinking is the cause of every failure. Action without thinking is the cause of every failure. And common sense comes from taking the time to think things through before you act. Listen to your intuition. Your intuition is one of the best guides that you possibly have. You know from some of the other work that we've done is that each person has inside them an intuitive sense which will always give you the exact right answer for you. They've done some studies between men and women. When they test women's intuition, you've heard of women's intuition, everybody's heard of women's intuition. They find that when you give men and women tests and they're asked to answer on the basis of their intuition, men's intuition is equally as accurate as women's intuition. The only difference is that in real life, women have the intelligence to listen to their intuition, which is why they're smarter than men. And women and men do not listen to their intuition. Instead, they override their intuition because they're trying to get something they want the fastest and easiest way, even if their gut feeling says don't do it. Your intuition will always give you the most accurate answer for you. It's almost like an inbuilt computer that will take all of your life experience and knowledge and everything going on around you and give you exactly the right answer. So listen to your intuition. Learn from your setbacks. This is one of the characteristics of high performing men and women is that every single time they have a problem or a difficulty, they sit back and they dissect it and they learn everything possible from it. They try to develop general principles from each setback. They say, what is the valuable lesson I can learn. So you take a look at everything that has happened to you. Take a look at the very most difficult experience that you're in right now and ask yourself, what is the most valuable lesson I can learn from this experience? And believe me, if you look for the lesson, in the Bible it says, seek and ye shall find. It doesn't say seek and occasionally you might find something. It says, seek and ye shall find. If you look for the valuable lesson or the seed of an equal or greater advantage or benefit in every difficulty, you will find it. It's always there. And I, I love the line from Socrates that says, the unexamined life is not worth living, which means that the life where you do not take the time to reflect on your experiences. Aristotle said that wisdom is an equal measure of experience plus reflection. And the reason so few people have wisdom is what they have is experience, 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 but they never take the time to sit back and reflect on what's happening to them, reflect on what they're learning. How many people here have seen people get out of bad relationships and get immediately back into bad relationships? Or get out of a lousy job and immediately join a company and get into another lousy job? What is the natural thing that people do? They, they get fired or laid off from a job, they quit, they go down the street, they look for what? Another job exactly just like, and act exactly like it. The hallmark of creativity is curiosity. The hallmark of ignorance and stupidity is the cessation or stopping from asking questions. And I've worked with some of the brightest men and women in this nation, and I find that the smartest people of all, the ones that have the greatest education and the most experience are the ones who ask the most questions. They ask questions almost as if they were children, but they never stop asking questions. They're very open and flexible, and they have the ability, once they learn a new piece of information, to drop what they're doing if the new information contradicts it and do something else. Do you know what most people do? Most people keep on doing what they're doing until they run into a wall. As they say, the more you do of what you're doing, the more you'll get of what you've got. Someone would point it out to me not long ago, and I think it's very true, is that all changes in our life come with the input of new information. That if we do not have new information, we keep on doing the same thing forever as the result of inertia. And creative people are always looking for faster, better, easier, cheaper, newer ways to do things. Remember, 80% of everything that we are doing today in our general business will be different five years from now. 80% of the products that we use, the food that we eat, the cars we drive, the music we listen to, the movies we go to, even the streets we drive on, 80% of everything will be new in five years. That's how rapidly things are changing. According to the research, all you need is an idea that's 10% new to start a fortune. An idea that's 10% new. As a matter of fact, an idea that's more than 10% new is probably too new for the average consumer to accept it. An idea that's 10% new. How many times have you been going about your daily business and you see the need for a product or service? And you say, now I wonder why somebody doesn't produce that. And about two or three years, then you say, well, it can't be any good. It's, I thought of it after, after all. And then two or three years later, a company comes out with that idea or some company comes and makes a million dollars that and you say, I thought of that idea two or three years ago. Every single person here has had that experience. What you have to do is trust your ideas. If you decide that you're going to earn a certain amount of money, that you're going to achieve a certain level of wealth, that you're going to achieve a certain life estate, and you program that into your subconscious mind and you then turn it over to your intuition, you will get the ideas, the insights, the inspirations necessary to achieve your goals. And that's the only difference between very wealthy, successful people and the average person is that they simply follow their intuition. They're not smarter, they're not different, they're not more educated, they're not more talented, they just follow that inner guide. 
Develop the people skills that you need to be successful. Take courses in communications. Take courses in effective listening. Take courses in public speaking. You know one of the most important parts of communicating and getting along well with others is the size of your vocabulary. You've probably heard that before. The size of your vocabulary, your ability to express yourself orally, your ability to stand on your feet, your ability to write effectively and get your point across to others will have a tremendous impact on your life because you cannot imagine a successful person who cannot communicate effectively with other people. And you can develop the capacity to be an excellent communicator. If you were to learn one new word a day, if you were to make an effort by carrying a dictionary around, I used, I have taught myself French, Spanish, German, and smatterings of about 10 other languages. And the way I taught myself that was I learned the basic vocabulary, I studied it, learned the basic vocabulary, and I carried a dictionary around with me. And every time I saw a word I didn't know, I looked it up in the dictionary. And within a very short period of time, I could eat, live, walk, talk, and speak fluently in those three societies, and I've traveled all over the world in those three languages. The Carnegie Institute of Technology did a study about seven years ago, ten years ago <laughs> now, and they studied 10,000 men and women who were let go from their companies, and they found that 95% of the people who were let go from their companies were let go because of their inability to get along with others. This is caused by low self-esteem more than anything else. In my estimation, those of you who know, know that low self-esteem more than anything else causes our personality problems. Not liking ourselves, not accepting ourselves, feeling inferior inside causes us to lash out at other people. And the wonderful thing is that if you're clear about your goals and you're committed to becoming excellent and you concentrate single-minded on what is important to you, you have a tendency to like yourself more. Your self-esteem goes up, your ability to get along with other people goes up. But if you have no goals and you're not very good at what you do and you're just doing whatever comes to hand, then your self-esteem goes down. Becoming a self-made millionaire is not the important thing. What is really important is the person you have to become to become a self-made millionaire. When I started off in, in this many years ago, I uh, came from very poor beginnings. I did not graduate from high school. I finished in the half of the class that makes the top half possible. When I left school, I dropped out of high school. I could only get laboring jobs. I was told, by the way, if you don't get a good education, you won't do well in life. You don't get good grades. Uh, you won't get a good job. Don't go to college. You won't do well and so on. And I believed that for a long time until I found there's hundreds of thousands, millions of people who dropped out of high school who went on to become millionaires and billionaires as well. The reason I say that to you, by the way, is don't let it hold you back. Don't let any experience that you've ever had in your life act as a break on your potential because there's hundreds of thousands of people who've had it worse than you could ever dream of who've gone on to accomplish wonderful things. So. I worked at laboring jobs for several years. I worked in construction. I worked on farms and ranches. I worked in factories, putting nuts on bolts hour after hour. And one day in a state of frustration, I began asking this question. Why is it that some people are more successful than others? So I began asking other successful people, what are you doing differently from me? And they told me and I did it and I got better results. I got into sales when I could no longer get a laboring job. And uh, in sales, uh, I noticed that one of the guys in my company was making 10 times as much as anybody else, and he was selling the same product out of the same office at the same price to the same people under the same conditions, and he was making 10 times as much as anybody else. So I went and asked him, what are you doing differently for me? And he told me, and I did it. Now, what I discovered, which changed my life and which brought us here today, is I discovered the law of, of, of cause and effect. The law of cause and effect, sowing and reaping, action and reaction, are the great, is the great universal or iron law of the universe. What it says is that everything happens for a reason, is that there are no causeless effects, is that even if we don't know what is causing the effect, we trace it back. It's the basis of the scientific process of all medical research, of all marketing, of all business, is if you can define an effect that you want, you can trace it back and find somebody who at one time did not have that effect and then find out what they did and then do the same things and you eventually get the same results. We say that success is not an accident. Failure is not an accident. Success leaves tracks. So if you just follow the tracks of other successful people, no matter where you're starting from, you eventually get to the same place that they get. This was a shocker for me because, and I learned later in psychology, by the way, that one of the, the two most important things we need to have to be happy and healthy is a sense of control, a feeling that we are in control of our lives, that things are happening for a reason, and a sense of coherence, a feeling that things fit together. Well, when I realized the law of cause and effect explained everything, I thought, wow. So in sales, I went to the top of my sales force. I read, I learned, attended courses, and especially I applied what I learned. And then when I got into sales management, I again, 
read the books and took the courses and asked for advice. And when I got into real estate and importation and development and manufacturing distribution and a whole series of businesses over the years, the first thing I did is I asked, how does it work? How do people succeed in this field? And then I buried myself and immersed myself. I spent hours and hours and hours studying, and then I did what the most successful people did. Interesting point. We say that nature is neutral. In other words, nature doesn't care who you are. It doesn't care if you're tall or short or male or female or black or white, educated or uneducated. Nature doesn't care. All that nature cares is that you do what successful people do. It's like making a recipe. Nature doesn't care. You follow a recipe. If you follow the recipe exactly, you get the dish. Nature doesn't care who's doing it. And that's the wonderful thing about our society. It's, it's basically like justice. It's blind is nature doesn't care. In fact, there are a lot of people who are not as smart and not as talented as you who are doing vastly better than you, not because they're better, but because they're just following proven success methods. Becoming a self-made millionaire is not the important thing. What is really important is the person you have to become to become a self-made millionaire. You have to become a totally different human being. My friends, one of my friends says that in order to be to achieve something you've never achieved before, you have to become someone you've never been before. And it's a really important insight is the qualities that you need to develop, the qualities on the inside to become a self-made millionaire are incredible qualities that make you a vastly better person. Not only better in terms of character, determination, discipline, decision-making, strength, and so on, they make you a far better person. They round out your character in a far better way. So that the real payoff of becoming wealth, wealthy is not because you can eat more, because how many more meals can you eat? How many more clothes can you wear? Because it's the kind of person that you become and then the kind of person, people that you associate, the kind of life that you have. If you have these qualities, your success is virtually guaranteed. And if you don't have these qualities, the qualities are learnable. Point number one is that all business or sales skills are learnable. All financial skills are learnable. If you can drive a car, you can learn any skill. If you can drive a car, you can learn the skill. Now, number two is you're probably only one skill away from doubling your income right now. You're probably only one skill away from setting yourself on the road to becoming a self-made millionaire. That turns out to be the case for almost everyone. It's a learnable skill. People say, well, I don't mean, I've never been very good with money. Well, get over it. Fact of the matter is you can learn what you need to learn to achieve anything that you want to achieve. So the success secrets of self-made millionaires, give yourself a score of one to 10. And if you are weak on one of these, it can be enough to hold you back. If you're strong on all of these, then there's no limit to what you can accomplish. The first is to dream big dreams. Dream big dreams. Practice what is called back from the future thinking and project forward. Develop a vision of yourself as happy, healthy, wealthy, thin. Practice what top people practice, which is what is called idealization. You project forward several years and you to imagine that your life is perfect in every way. Imagine that you have no limitations. Imagine that you have all the time and all the money and all the friends and all the contacts and all the education, and all the experience, and that you could be or have or do anything you want in life. If you could, what would it be? If your life were perfect in five years, what would it look like? How much would you be earning? How much would you be worth? What kind of a family life would you have? What kind of health would you have? What kind of car would you be driving? What would your life be like if you could wave a magic wand and make it perfect in every way? Now, what we have found is this is the starting point of great riches and it's the starting point of great success in life is for you to have a dream or a vision of a wonderful future. Number two is to do what you love to do. Whenever you find people who are really successful in life, they're people who do what they love to do. They love their work. The great rule for success in life is to find something that you love to do and then find a way to make a living doing it. Now, when you find what you love to do, it'll be something that gives you energy, it motivates you, it enthuses you. It's probably something that you were meant to do from the time you were born. And when you ask self-made millionaires, what sort of work do you do? They'll often say, I've never worked a day in my life. I just do what I like to do. Number three is commit to excellence. Now this is really, really important. And I had a hard time with this as a young man because I was never good at anything. I was never picked for any team. And if I was picked, I was the first person cut. I um, got lousy grades in every class. I got fired from multiple jobs. I even got fired from a job uh, pumping gas once. Uh, I got fired, I went from job to job, and then I discovered that all people who are successful are excellent at what they do. 
You know the old question they asked Willie Sutton, the bank robber, why do you rob banks? He said, that's where the money is. Well, being in the top 10% is where the money is. So what you have to do is you have to pay any price and make any sacrifice to get into the top 10% in your field. Now here's the good news. If you're doing what you love to do, you will want to be in the top 10% in your field. If you don't want to be excellent at what you're doing, it means you're in the wrong field. It just means that you're, you're, you're marking time, you're treading water. And there's a lot of people who are in their field and they do their job and you know, they go home at night and don't think about their work and so on. And this kind of an attitude means that you have no future. You have a very shaky present. That crackling sound you hear is the ice breaking under your feet, okay? And you have a very, you have no future because if you're not doing what you love to do and throwing your whole heart into it, you're just marking time. But everybody is designed so that there is something that you love to do that you can do well. And the fact that you love it means that you probably have the ability to excel it. So make this decision to get into the top 10%. Let me tell you how, what changed my life. Here I was struggling in my late 20s and I, I learned this, it was a breakthrough thought, is that everybody's in the top 10% started in the bottom 10%. Everybody who's doing well was once doing poorly. Everybody who is at the top of your field today was once not even in your field at all and didn't even know it existed. What that means is that if you're willing to pay the price and work hard and make the sacrifices, you can get into the top 10%. Now, how long does it take? It doesn't take a week or a month. Most people are really impatient. And to achieve mastery in your field takes five to seven years. People say five to seven years, geez. I'll be five to seven years older before I start enjoying the big rewards. Well, how much older will you be in five to seven years anyway? Now, here's an important point. Are you ready? The time is going to pass anyway. The time is going to pass. Five to seven years from now, five to seven years will have passed. The only question is, are you going to be at the top of your field or are you still going to be down there with the, with the mediocre 80%? And the wonderful thing is this is nobody's better than you and nobody's smarter than you. If anybody else is at the top of the field, it means that you can be at the top of your field. Just go to them and find out how they got there because they started at the bottom. Now, it may take longer for some people and less for others, but everybody who puts one foot in front of the other and keeps moving eventually gets it. And that's where all the rewards are. Not only that, that's where all the joy in life is. When you're really good at what you do, you feel wonderful about yourself. You're respected and esteemed by everybody around you. You can, you can write your own ticket. You can open any door when you're good at what you do. Because you get up in the morning and you know you're good. And, 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 and that is more important than the rewards that go with it. The next key is to develop your unique talents and abilities. Every single person is designed from infancy with special talents and abilities that if you develop them to their height can enable you to accomplish anything you want in life. Everyone is genetically structured to be able to do something superbly, to do something they enjoy, to do it well, and to get great satisfaction from it. Peter Drucker often asks the question, what are you good at? What are you good at today? What should you be good at? What could you be good at? What will you be good at? And so one of the questions that we ask is looking back in your life, what has been most responsible for your success up to now? What has been most responsible in the past? What is it that you have done that has gotten you the best results? Because as we said before, success leaves tracks. And if you look back into your past, you'll often find indicators that guide you to your future. The next key to becoming a self-made millionaire is to see yourself as self-employed. What we found is the top 3% of adults in our society see themselves as self-employed. They see themselves as in charge of their own lives. When I started off my career as a young man, I was 21 years old, working as a construction laborer, living in a one-bedroom apartment, broke, taking buses two hours every morning to get to work, and buses two hours to get back. I still remember that, and I still remember a light going off one evening. I was sitting there in my little apartment in my little kitchen alcove, and I suddenly realized that I was responsible, is that I was in charge of my own life, that no one was coming to the rescue. And it was one of the great turning points in my life. So what you find is that all exceptional people are highly responsible people. They look upon themselves as self-employed. Sometimes I'll ask an audience, I'll say, how many people here are self-employed? And some people will raise their hand and some won't. I'll say, now what's the true answer to this question? And the true answer is that everyone is self-employed. The biggest mistake you could ever make is to ever think you work for anyone else but yourself. Even if someone else signs your paycheck for you all your life, the most valuable people in any organization are the people who treat the company as though it belongs to them. They see everything that happens as affecting them personally. 
They're not the nine to fivers, the no hopers that say, you know, I go to work, but I'm not at work. I don't think about my work. These people, somebody has told them that's a clever way to think. It's the way losers think. Winners think about their company and when they're not there, they think about how they can do it better. When something happens in their company, they take it personally because they see themselves as highly responsible. As a result, they're paid more, they're given more educational opportunities, they're promoted faster, and these are the people that eventually, like cream, rise to the top of every organization and every industry, the top 3%. The next key to becoming a self-made millionaire is to develop a clear sense of direction. Developing a clear sense of direction means that you need to become intensely goal-oriented. We find that all successful people are goal-oriented. There's an old saying, you can't hit a target that you can't see. You've got to know what you want in every area of your life. Some years ago, I worked with the Hunt Oil Company in Texas. The Hunt Oil Company was founded by H.L. Hunt, who became the wealthiest self-made multi-billionaire in the world. At his peak, he owned 200 companies and had a royalty income of $3 million a day. Most phenomenal man, by the way. And he was interviewed by a friend of mine on television before he died in the early 70s. And he was asked, what are the secrets to success? He said, the keys to success have only been two through all my life, and I will tell you what they are. He said, number one, he said, decide exactly what it is you want and write it down and make a plan to achieve it. And number two is determine the price you're going to have to pay to get it and then resolve to pay that price. Now, where the law of sowing and reaping cause and effect, I learned an additional point to that. I learned that your current life today is the result of the price you've sown up to now, it is whatever you've put in, you get out. So whatever you're getting out today is a result of what you've put in. If you don't like what you're getting out, what you have to do is you have to put in something different. What I found is this, is that life is always just in the long run. So, so therefore, life says this, is there's a price you have to pay and there's two qualities. First of all, you have to pay the price in full for your success of study, preparation, hard work, and so on. And second of all, you have to pay the price in advance. You don't get it afterwards. Where the world works is first you put in what you need to put in, and then you get out the rewards. So you have to ask yourself, what is the price that you have to pay to achieve the success that you desire? And you have to write it down and make a plan and work on it every day. Next is refuse to consider the possibility of failure. It's the most amazing darn thing is that the, the fear of failure is the greatest single obstacle to success in adult life. And it's not failure itself because each one of you is a professional failure. Each one of you has failed over and over and over again. Isn't that true? All of us fail. All human beings fail over and over. Nine out of 10 things that we try don't work out the way we expect it. We have failures in relationships and in jobs and in careers and investments and everything. It's not the failure that holds you back. The failure makes you smarter. We say that it is the fear of failure, not failure, that holds you back. And the way that you overcome failure is you never consider the possibility of failure. The rule is this, is there's no such thing as failure, there's only feedback is when you try something that doesn't work, you get feedback, not failure, and recognize that most things you try aren't going to work the first few times. So what you do is you say, oh, that's an interesting bit of uh, feedback, <laughs> and you pick yourself up, and you move forward, and you have more feedback, and you move forward. To become a self-made millionaire, you're going to fail over and over again, year after year after year. But your brain has a cybernetic mechanism, which means that everything, sometimes you try something, you get feedback, which makes you smarter. And when you try something else, you get feedback, which makes you smarter. And eventually you reach the point where you're too smart and you stop making mistakes. You start to do more and more things right and fewer and fewer things wrong. But you can't get there unless you have experienced the failures. Henry Ford once said that failure is merely an opportunity to more intelligently begin again.